Hey everybody, I am excited because I get to make one of my favorite cakes and I'm going to be making a red velvet cake showing y'all how to actually doctor up a boxed red velvet cake mix, okay? Um, now I have made homemade from scratch red velvet cake and it's good. I've made a lot of scratch cakes, um, but I also like box cake mix and I like to doctor them up. And when you doctor them up, honestly, they're just as good to me. I think they're just as good. And like I have always said, as long as you put a homemade frosting on them, then most people um, ain't gonna be able to tell the difference because they're just gonna think it's from scratch, okay? Um, so this is a Duncan Hines. I like Duncan Hines cake mixes. And this is gonna be, this is the uh, Duncan Hines Perfectly Moist Red Velvet Cake. Um, really, honestly and truly, all a red velvet cake is, is a devil's food cake that's been dyed red. Cause it's actually a chocolate cake really by nature, okay? So this cake, I'm doing a traditional red velvet cake. Southern red velvet cake originally does not have a cream cheese frosted, okay? I'm gonna be making, with this cake, I'm going to be making it's called ermine frosting. Uh, some people call it boiled. All right, look at that. It's all sifted, no lumps. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna, this is a cup and a fourth of buttermilk, okay? So just make you like a little well down here in the bottom. Just separate it out. Put a cup and a fourth of buttermilk. Buttermilk just makes it so much better. A third cup of vegetable oil. This is canola. I will share the recipe for the frosting when I make it. There's no recipe for this, so just watch me, uh, just watch me do it. And three eggs, okay? Three large eggs sitting out at room temperature. These, um, a lot of times I don't, no ahead of time and um, my eggs haven't been sitting out so just put them down in some warm tap water and that warms them right up now i like to crack my eggs before i put them in stuff because i mean i've cracked eggs for years but you still never know when you're going to get a um, a piece of your um, shell in there and you don't want that so what I do, I just break them up just a little, pour them all in there. Now I'm gonna be baking, I'm gonna be putting these, this cake in two eight inch round pans. As you can see, look at there. And there's no need to use the mixer for this because when you sift it ahead like that and you use this whisk like I'm, I use a whisk, it stirs up really easy and pretty quick. And just like I always say, you don't over mix cakes. Even a scratch cake. Most of the time you do your wet ingredients and then you add your dry in and then you alternate with some kind of liquid to get it all in. And once you get it all incorporated, you're done mixing. And it's the same way with this cake mix, okay? You don't want to over mix. And what I do is I get right down in the bottom with my whisk and I'll make sure I've got all of it mixed up. And you can smell it, it smells like a chocolate cake. And look at that, how smooth that is. Sifting ahead of time really does make a difference. See that? Okay. So this is, this is two Wilton, I use Wilton, 
eight inch uh, round pans. Um, if you wanted to do three, you could, a three layer, you would need two boxes of cake mix um, to make three good, if you want a bit really tall cake, uh, that's what you would need to do. What I do, I just spray these really well. You can flour them if you want, but I really never have to flour these. I just spray them. Uh, that's one thing with a cake mix. Now, if this, if this was a scratch cake, I would be flouring it. I would actually use Crisco. All right, it is time to do the frosting. Now, this, um, you're going to need a cup and a half of whole milk. And you want to have ahead of time, you want to have a cup and a half of butter that's been sitting out. So a cup and a half of butter is three sticks. And you need to have that sitting out to where it's uh, room temperature because you're going to need that later. But right now we're doing what we call the uh, roux part or the, actually what this almost does, this is kind of makes like a pudding to start out with. Um, so I got my heat on a medium high. Got the cup and a half of whole milk in there. And you want seven tablespoons of all-purpose flour. So traditionally, really original, originally a red velvet cake had this frosting on it. Cream cheese frosting was put on a red velvet cake later. So in true original, true original, original red velvet cakes had this kind of frosting. So there's one, two, three, and that is unsalted butter, four, five, six, Seven tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and you got your heat going on. That's about a medium high, and I'm going to stir this together. Now you want it to. You don't want any lumps in it, so it's best to use your whisk. And what you're going to do, you're going to cook this until it starts to thicken and it looks like a paste. Okay. So this takes probably just, it don't take long. Actually, it just takes a couple of minutes for it to start to come to a boil. The milk was cold. You can start out with room temperature milk if you want. And you just want this to cook and start to thicken. Once it starts to thicken, you want to take it off the heat and you have to cool it. It has to be cooled down completely before you uh, finish your steps. So let me let that. Come back just a second. So now it's starting to thicken, so you're going to add in your, your sugar. So what I do, this is a cup and a half of granulated sugar.
And as you can see, it's starting to thicken up. And it looks just like a, a pudding, pretty much. So you're putting your sugar in here because granulated sugar, it's, it's just what it says, it's granulated and you don't want your frosting to be grainy because traditional buttercream. All right, y'all, the cake layers are done and both of them is about even and um, it took them probably about 25 minutes the most. So let me show you how I get them out of the, the pans. You always take your knife, run around the edges, and what I do, I like to cool them on a rack, a wire rack. And see, they just flip right out, and I turn it over turn them over and cool them with the top up. And, um, and then while they're on the rack, they're gonna be able to get air on the bottom that way they'll cool off completely and you won't have to worry about any hot spots. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna level the top of these just a little bit. Just a little, because I'm gonna take any scrap that I get off the top and I'm gonna use to crumble a little bit on the top because I like to do that. See, it just flips right out. So I like to have a little bit of um, crumbs on a red velvet cake on the top to let people know that it's a red velvet cake because some people maybe can't um, have red dye or some people don't like chocolate or may just don't like red velvet. So I always level, level the tops just a little, just cut. I'll show y'all how to do that in just a little bit when they cool off. And I take that little bit of cake and I just create some crumbs to put on top. And I'll show you all when I put it together how I do that. So. These will cool off. As you see, they're all, they're both pretty even. These will cool off, finish cooling, probably take them another, probably 45 minutes to an hour to completely cool before we can uh, frost them. So now we're gonna make the frosting. So as you can see, your milk and flour is a mixture. Okay, I got the flour milk mixture in there now i'm going to add in the butter so you got that going and this is your butter and i'm going to show y'all how i do this if you want to put the butter in a little at a time Once you get the butter in there, I'm gonna put a dash of salt and a teaspoon of vanilla. Now don't worry if you do this and it looks weird and it starts looking funny or looks curdled or whatever, it's okay, it will come together.
regular American buttercream does have two sticks of butter, so this ain't, this is about a stick more. So you won't let that whip up. So this just came out of the, off the beater. After I put everything together, it just, it came. Alrighty, it's time to put the cake together. And I want to show you all um, how I level the tops. So I just, you need to level the top of a cake. Um, you need a serrated knife. So what I do, I just put my hand on top, cut straight across. Don't have to be perfect. And see, I want to save, save the tops for the crumbs. That way I can put, decorate the top with a little bit of the crumbs that way everybody will know um, that it's a red velvet cake. But see, it's real thin. You're not taking a lot off. So what I'm going to do now is whenever you, um, I'm putting it on this cute silver plate since it's Christmas. Whenever you put a cake on a pan or something, Put you a little frosting down on it, on your pan, so your cake won't move. Just put it down like that. Be cool, huh? And you want to put your frosting. This is a two-layer. And that's probably, maybe a cup, probably a cup of uh, frosting. And just go out, start from the middle. And I use a, these are Wilton's. All of my stuff is Wilton most of the time. Most of my cake stuff is Wilton. So you just wanna go, and if this was a three layer cake, you wouldn't have to go all the way out to the edge because when you put heavy layers on frosting on your in your middle, when you put the layers down, it causes the frosting to kind of squish out. And if you leave a little room on the sides whenever you're putting layers on a cake, um, it'll keep it from doing that. If you don't, you don't have to go all the way out. Now, this frosting, ideally, I like to have a lot of frosting, so. I wish it would have made a little more. This is probably about three cups total. I wish it would have made a little more. So if you make this frosting and you like a lot of frosting, then double it. Double the double the recipe. Because I like a lot. I like a lot in the layers. Now this is just a two layer cake. Um, so it'd be okay, but I really, I really do like a lot of frosting, especially in between the layers. So, so I probably ended up adding about a cup and a half in here. Guys, I really, you know I don't measure. I just fix stuff. I can't, it's hard for me to give you an exact measurement. I just make stuff and whatever looks good, I do it. And that's about how I, how I, that's how I cook. Okay, so there's the first layer. Now, with, with a, um, now, when you do a top layer, when you're doing the top layer, flip your cake over, okay? So, this is the actual bottom of the layer, and if you just lay it right at the edge, 
if you do that like how I did that, see? So I want y'all to be able to see it. This, my bloopers. I want y'all to be able to see this because I want to show you how I put it together. So there we go. So when you're doing, when you're frosting a cake, so this is perfect right there. So this is a red velvet, so it's really hard not to get the crumbs to show through. You can do what they call a crumb coat. You can just put a thin layer over and chill it and then come back and finish it if you want. But um, I really don't mind that there's crumbs showing. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This is one of them times I don't care if there's any crumbs showing through. Most people don't care. So what I do, I put I put every bit of it on top. Okay. Now if I had plenty, if this had made more, I didn't think really right to double it. Um, I would save some to use to pipe a little bit, maybe some rosettes or something. But this is just going to be a traditional looking um, cake. This is not going to be piped or nothing. So whenever you start with a lot of frosting on top, bring it down to where it comes down the sides. Now I have one of them cake turners that uh, you put your cake on and it rotates, but it's been messing up on me. So I'm just going to do this the hard way. So I want to show you what to do. Bring your, now you can keep your crumbs at minimum if you keep your, your knife your spatula going like that. Bring it down and over. Down and over. This is hard for me to do, me doing it by myself, guys. So please don't ball me out if you can't see very well. I'm trying. <laughs> doing my best to show you. So you will bring it all the way. The most delicious cakes usually, guys, don't really look the most perfect. Now, I do decorate cakes. I've, I've made cakes all my life, pretty much, since my since in my 20s. I've always baked. And nowadays, every, all the, um, the trend, as they call it, is the cakes look rustic. Some people even do what they call naked cakes. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of naked cakes. I still like a lot of frosting, but most people... Um, like those naked cakes that everybody's doing nowadays. A lot of the wedding cakes are naked cakes. So I'm just going to make sure. So what you got to do is you're going to go all the way down. So I wanted to show you all how I did this. So I just take it and you want to keep it still a lot on top. So I'm just going to take it, push to the edge. That way I can get all the way down to the bottom. So the trend really is nowadays is to have to have um, swirls and stuff in your frosting to make it look rustic. 
and more, I don't know, authentic, I guess, is the word that a lot of people like to use. But this doesn't have to be perfect, guys, trust me. What I do is I take my, my, my spatula and I bring it like that. Let me get my big. So now I got my big daddy out. So this is hard for me to do with my, my turntable messed up. So I'm just doing it the old Tommy way. So I'll take my big spatula and I'm using the straight edge to it. Now I'll just go around and do some swirls. Then I'm gonna put some crumbs around the side. Now this is, now I'm going to, um, I'm going to crumble these up and when we come back, I'll, um, I'll show you how I put it around the cake. All right, guys, I crumbled up the cake, um, the scraps from the cake and all you do is just go around the top. Sprinkle around the top, it gives it that pretty, looks like Christmas, but it don't have to be Christmas time to enjoy a good red velvet cake. Now, I love cream cheese frosting. I didn't make this because I don't. I like cream cheese frosting, and you can most certainly look up, Google a cream cheese frosting. I will be doing a cream cheese frosting uh, for you all. Um, I'm gonna to try to do a black walnut cake soon and that has a cream cheese frosting. Um, but if you want cream cheese frosting, then make a cream cheese frosting. Some people don't like it, but I wanted to make this one this way because uh, a lot of people don't know that a traditional red velvet cake, original red velvet cakes did not have cream cheese frosting. They had this frosting here. Okay, and um, there, that's it. That looks, so what I would do, I would take the scraps off the side. I usually just take my paper towels and just dust them off. But now this is on this cute little platter. And, um, but see, Look at that. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful little red velvet cake, guys. Look at that. It's a perfect size for Christmas. 
and it's so good. So I hope you try it. If you do try it, let me know. Um, disfrosting really is not hard. Um, and it, if you don't like a really sweet frosting, this is the kind that I recommend um, because it it is not as sweet, not as sweet at all. Nothing like um, traditional buttercream or red um, or cream cheese frosting. So this really is not as sweet, and it's really good. And it's all right, y'all. My little oh, taste tester. Yeah, she's gonna taste it. She's my little critic. She don't, she, now Kenzie doesn't like a lot of like heavy sweet frosting. Now this one does not, is not that sweet. It's good. Mm. Now she does, she does love cream cheese frosting, but she's not a big sweet eater. I don't like buttercream that much. Yeah, yeah. Cause buttercream can be really heavy and sweet. So what do you think about this? It's really good. Yeah. I like it. It's very light. I'll take a bite. It's really light and it's so good. It is good. She looked. See? Look at that. It's got its own. It's hard it's to It's so describe. pretty. Yeah. Like the cake over there looks so cute. Mm. Kind of tastes like whipped cream. It does have a whipped Swiss cream taste. Swiss cream buttercream is really light and fluffy. Yep, this is good. What it tastes like, I mean, you know you got red velvet, but um, you can taste that old fashioned taste, I guess, is what I can taste in it. So let me show y'all. We cut into it, look how pretty it is. Look at that. So look. Mm. Christmassy. Now I like mine with a scoop of ice cream. Ice cream. That's what I was and where this frosting is not that sweet, ice cream would just top it off. But but there you go. A two layer is really all you need. If you did a three layer, that would be a lot of cake. But this one, to me, I think is perfect layer. So there you go, guys. She approves. <laughs> My little critic over here, but. She really, she's a little foodie like her mama, so. Yes. But anyway, so I hope y'all try this. If you try it, let me know. I will post the recipe for this frosting. Go under photos and look under the albums in photos and you'll see recipes, okay? And that's where I will post the um, recipe for this frosting. And, um, if you want to double it, double it, but actually it turned out pretty good. It actually turned out about enough, I think, for this one. So, um, all right, guys, I'm going to get off here. Thanks for watching Mountain Cooking with Missy, where it's nothing fancy. Just good eating. Just good eating. See you guys.